Hi everyone, welcome to Anthony's Hobby Corner. I hope you're all keeping well and safe. On today's video, we are going to be looking at converting your traditional lighting within your model locomotives and passenger cars over to LED lighting. Now, there are many ways you can accomplish this, but I'm going to be talking about uh, and comparing uh, the three uh, most common methods to achieving um, LED lighting in your locomotives and passenger cars. Now, for the purpose of this video, uh, since it's actually intended for model railroaders, I'm not going to go into the in-depth theory on as to how these methods function. Uh, I will perhaps uh, shoot another video uh, about the theory about each of these systems. Um, if, should you have an interest uh, in that as well, you, you'd be more than welcome to, to review that. Uh, however, for the purpose of today's video, it's going to be really comparing the three different methods that I'm aware of that I've been using uh, and also will share my recommendations uh, as part of the process. Now, before we go into the three different methods that I have outlined here uh, in introducing LED illumination into your locomotives, uh, let's just talk about the LEDs themselves. Now, LEDs, unlike your traditional incandescent you know, lamps, uh, LEDs are current loads. In other words, they require X amount of current uh, to, to illuminate. Uh, irrespective of the voltage that you actually feed them. Uh, and so they're kind of unique in that manner. And so if you control the, the current going into an LED, i.e. ensuring that the appropriate amount of current goes into, an, uh, goes into an LED, it will illuminate appropriately and will also provide you with uh, a long lifespan from that perspective. And so what you're really seeing here is really three different methods of controlling current going into an LED. And that's really the premise of, of, of these methods. And so uh, for this comparison, I'm using the same LEDs uh, for all three different uh, test cases or use cases. Um, and I'm also powering the LEDs with a uh, bench power supply, as you can see there. I'm gonna be actually feeding it 12 volts from the power supply, uh, which is, you know, which is really a good, uh, a good benchmark uh, to do this comparison. And I also have a, a multimeter here. I'm gonna be setting it into the milliampere setting uh, so that we can, be, we can monitor the current uh, that's going through each of these LEDs uh, as part of the test case. So I guess the first question is, before we go into this, why are we converting your, uh, your regular incandescent lamps from your, um, from, or your traditional lamps within your locomotives to LEDs? Well, perhaps there are many reasons. One is the fact that if you have vintage locomotives, uh, it's hard to find those bulbs anymore once they burn out. And so, you know, you convert them to LEDs. Uh, and from there on, they have so much longevity that they'll probably last the lifespan of the locomotive from there on. Number two, uh, they provide very, they generate very little heat, almost minimal, almost none, uh, based on you know the size of the LED you're going to be using and the current you're going to drive through it. Uh, and so it does not deform uh, the plastics on your locomotive, um, and obviously will uh, will uh, will prolong the locomotive from that standpoint as well. Number three is that these, these LED lamps uh, have a, a very long lifespan, and so therefore uh, they're really pretty much trouble-free once installed. And number four, you can actually have a very bright lamp uh, that will have a constant brightness, and I'll talk about that uh, later when we compare the three different methods of, of uh, illumination uh, and as, as an advantage uh, with regards to constant lighting. And of course, the most obvious you probably will also realize is the fact that LEDs are come in very small form factors, uh, right? And you can get them down, right down to you know uh, a millimeter uh, type LEDs or SMDs, which are very very small LEDs, surface mount LEDs, uh, and so therefore you can install them in in you know in smaller locomotives uh, with ease. 
uh, and also look more prototypical from that standpoint as well. So many advantages really to convert your lighting over to LED lighting for your locomotives and passenger cars. All right, so let's move on to what we're here to discuss today really is the method for using LEDs on your, on your locomotives and passenger cars. All right, so what you see on the left here, I've actually got three different methods that I've actually outlined. Uh, and I have actually progressed between all three different methods. Um, and I'll talk about where I've actually ended up and why I'm using the method I'm using today. So uh, the first method you'll see here is where people use a, uh, a resistor in series with your LED. And what a resistor does here in this specific case is acts as a current limiting resistor, um, current limiting device. And so based on the value that you choose for the resistor, you can actually f decide exactly how much current passes through the LED. And remember I mentioned before, LEDs are current loads. And so therefore, you need to make sure that you provide your LED with the appropriate amount of current for it to eliminate safely. So LEDs, again, I'm generalizing here, but again, depending on the color of the LED and, and so on, uh, they, can, they, they have an ideal operating current. Uh, but basically, you know, if I was to generalize at a very high level, uh, LEDs, uh, you know, can op operate between uh, somewhere between, let's say, 7 to 8 milliampers uh, of current all the way up to about 20 milliampers of current. Now, ideally, what you'll see there is most LEDs function very well uh, with, with 20 milliampers. Uh, and uh, just keep that in mind as we you realize later on why I mentioned that. All right, so before we go any further, I just want to share one more caveat here with all of us is that what I'm demonstrating here typically is for, you know, your model layouts that you have or model locomotives that you have uh, that are running on DC systems, direct current systems. This is not designed for anyone running DCC uh, locomotives. Again, if you have DCC locomotives, well, if you perhaps open them up, you'll realize that your DCC decoders already have uh, the uh, the option uh, uh, to basically light LEDs from the circuit itself within the decoder. So there's no need for any specific driving circuits like this uh, for running LEDs in DCC locomotives. That's already been uh, accounted for and accommodated for. So again, a quick caveat. Uh, is that these three methods, again, that are being compared uh, specifically for DC circuits or DC railroads that you would uh, be running in your home. All right, now that we've got that uh, out of the way, let's just talk about the three different methods here. So the most common method that you would notice or you would see that's been deployed or been utilized by most model railroaders is the one on the far left, which is, which is actually using a current limiting resistor in series with your LED. And so this is the most simplest, simplified circuit to put in place uh, inside a locomotive. Um, however, it does have some drawbacks, which we can talk about when we actually do the actual comparisons between the three different methods. So what's really happening here is that, you know, without going into too much uh, details on the electronic side, um, basically, this resistor that you have here in series with your LED acts as a current limiting resistor and will ensure that this LED receives the desired amount of current that you would like it to receive. Now, typically, uh, most people would use a 1 kilo ohm resistor. You can put something slightly lower than that as well if you want more current to flow through your LED. Uh, but typically, with a 12 volt input, uh, and most most of your layout transformers, you know, uh, provide a, a max voltage between 12 and 16 volts, really. But uh, and and so for this purpose, I'm going to be using 12 volts uh, as the supply uh, for all three different me me mechanisms. Um, but um, uh, in this case, if you're using a 12 volt supply uh, and you want to make sure you have uh, you use a sorry you use a one kilo ohm resistor. Uh, you will end up with about 8 to 9 milliampers going through this LED. And that's based on, on, on the simple, simple formula of Ohm's law, V equals IR. 
where V is the voltage, I is the current, and R is the resistance. And I can actually go through the detailed theory in that one, uh, perhaps on another video, uh, as, as the purpose of this video is really to compare the three different mechanisms and not really go into the detail, in-depth uh, theory behind it. So what you're seeing here is I've got uh, positive 12 volts coming into this rail here, positive rail, and that feeds into resistor, goes through your LED, and the LED now connects back to the negative rail and goes back to the power supply. And so the same happens for all three mechanisms. For the second mechanism here, I also have the positive rail feeding into uh, the LM334, negative rail coming back in from the LED back to the power supply. And the third mechanism here, a model here, is also using a positive rail connecting in through your CL2M3 LED driver and then the negative going right into back into the power supply. Again, they're all very, very simple, uh, simple circuits to put into a locomotive, uh, but uh, give you three different uh, outcomes, which we will definitely talk about in this video. All right, so the mechanism number one here for the one kilo ohm resistor uh, is that you have a one kilo ohm resistor that's gonna give you about uh, eight to nine milliamperes into your LED based on a 12 volt input. I've also typically used 560 ohms that gives you a bit more current uh, into your uh, into your LED as well and which is very safe again as long as you don't go above 20 milliamperes because 20 milliamperes is the ideal operating um, current for some of these LEDs uh, but if you don't go too higher than that you'll be you'll be fairly safe so the second mechanism I'm talking about here is uh, a little bit more complicated in the sense that it just takes it one step further is that rather than using a resistor to control the current going into the LED, you actually use a current source, which is a, a device that's designed to, uh, to control the amount of current that it, it releases on the output stage of this little device. And it is an adjustable current source, so you can actually adjust how much current you want going through it um, over to the LED. Now, and so this, this device typically operates, gives you between one microampere or to a max of 10 milliamperes. And so, but however, the way this circuit has been, has been, uh, has been set up, um, it has the ability to drive about 15 milliamperes into the LED. And if you're interested in, in the theory behind that as well, I can share the circuit and, 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 and the, uh, the associated details with that. The third mechanism here, is using a device called an LED driver. And this is a fairly new device in the market uh, compared to the old resistor mechanism. Uh, and as you can see, uh, based on the description, it, this is a device that's been purely built to drive an LED. And that's why, as you can see, it's as simple as using a res resistor. It just connects in series with your LED uh, and it ensures that your LED receives 20 milliamperes irrespective of the voltage coming in. So that's a really neat feature about both these mechanisms actually, is that irrespective of the voltage that you feed, feed into this little device, it will make sure that this LED only receives the desired amount of current into the LED. Unfortunately, that doesn't really work for resistors. So let's talk about some specifications on the LM334. It is a adjustable current source. It, it, ha it can take an input voltage all the way up to 40 volts. So you can feed it almost anything from I think 1 volt to up to 40 volts and it'll turn itself on and it'll provide you know the desired current based on the resistor you, you, you bridge over here. Um, and this one has been set up to provide about 15 milliamperes to the LED. The resistor I have here is a 4.7 ohm resistor be between R and V minus. And uh, the 4.7 ohm resistor uh, in this configuration with the, with the LM334 will give you about 15 milliamperes over into this LED. And we'll demonstrate that with the, uh, with the uh, multimeter uh, once we have this activated. The LED driver, as I said, is, is, a, is a fairly new, newer uh, solution. And it's even more simpler as there's no need for any resistors, as you can see here. This is a little electronic device 
that uh, is very clever and it basically uh, can take any voltage up to 90 volts and throughout that entire range it will provide a constant current of 20 milliamperes to your LED. So as you can see going from left to right uh, your resistor typical me methods here gives you about 8 milliamperes to the LED. The LN334 configured in this manner gives you about 15 milliamperes and the uh, the CL2N3 LED driver is designed to give you 20 milliamperes to your LED. All right, so let's uh, let's compare the three different options here. Now, in the first method here, as we mentioned before, we are using a current limiting resistor that will then limit the current going into this LED, and that's a very well known method that's been that has been used for many years. Now, one little caveat that I want to share with you here is that most people typically would use a one kilo ohm resistor, as I've, I've marked here. Uh, especially when you're running 12 volts or for model trains, most people use that. However, for to keep this comparison fair, I've actually changed the resistor to a 560 ohm resistor. And the reason for that is that if you use a 1 kilo ohm resistor using Ohm's law, it will, it will permit approximately 8 milliamperes to the LED at the ideal voltage of 12 volts and anything below that it will start ramping up towards the 8 milliamperes well i felt that's a little bit unfair because if we were to run this one at 8 milliamperes well the other two methods actually run the led at a higher higher um, higher current setting uh, the ln334 for example the way it's being configured here uh, is designed to run at 15 milliamperes, even though the LN334 can only give up 10 milliamperes maximum, but I'll talk about the trick that's been used here to get 15 milliamperes. Either way, the LN334 runs at 15 milliamperes with this LED, and the CL2N3 LED driver is designed to give 20 milliamperes. So I felt that the comparison may not be as fair because you've got 8 milliamperes coming in with the resistor, and so I, I, I changed the resistor down to a 560 ohm resistor that will then match this up to about 15 milliamperes coming into the LED as well to the resistor mailer method. Okay, so let's talk about the, the method of using a LM334 to drive an LED. An LM334 is known as an adjustable current source. And it has the ability to provide a constant current to the output pin, um, re regardless of the input voltage that you feed to it, with a maximum of 40 volts. So anything between 1 uh, and 40 volts uh, fed into the input pin of this LM334 will still generate a maximum of 10 milliamperes into the LED or into the output. And that's the beauty about using a adjustable current source. You can actually um, maintain a constant current coming into this um, LED, no matter what voltage you feed into this device. As you as you realize now that that's not the same when you use an LED, a resistor. The resistor method, as you increase the voltage from zero all the way up to 12 volts, the brightness of the LED will change. It'll first start to illuminate. Uh, once it gets a bit beyond its um, minimal voltage, uh, a V forward uh, of the LED, and then it will start to increase in intensity, uh, going all the way up to 12 volts at full intensity. With the LN334, soon as the LN334 turns on, and I believe it takes about a volt for it to turn on, um, and you hit you the volt, uh, forward voltage of the LED, which is also still 2.1 volts, I believe. Uh, around the 3 volt, 3.5 or 3.2 volt mark, this this LN334 will be uh, start to saturate, and it will actually start to start feeding the 10 milli uh, start feeding towards 10 milliamperes uh, into the um, LED almost immediately. Um, and now, of course. 
I mentioned before that we are getting 15 milliampers into this LED, and you're perhaps wondering why am I making a contradicting statement saying that the LN334 can go to a max of 10 milliampers. Well, the way it's been designed, it can go up to 10 milliampers on the output. However, the way the circuit has been has been utilized here, it's leveraging some additional current that's between uh, that travels between the R pin and the voltage minus V minus pin uh, to feed the LED as well. And there's about a maximum of five milliampers that travels between the R. Um, if if you bridge the R pin and the V minus pin to a resistor, it will give you an additional five milliampers that you can leverage towards lighting your LED. Um, and by no means, I didn't design the circuit. It's something I found uh, on uh, some model railroad forums that people also use them, and that's how I've been using it as well. But I actually ran some tests to actually verify how it's actually functioning. So it's a, a neat little trick to get an LN334 to give you more than 10 milliampers. Uh, and of course, the circuit diagrams uh, up here as well, which you can also see. It's very, very simple circuit. LN334 and a single resistor, and you got yourself a constant lighting circuit. Remember, out of these three methods, the only method that's not constant lighting or constant illumination is the resistor. It's the one that will vary up all the way up its intensity. The current source, which is the LN334, and the LED driver, the CL2M3, will give you a constant brightness once it saturates. And that's more desirable for model trains because your locomotive main main headlights, etc., don't vary as they as, as the speed increases. Uh, the, the the intensity of the uh, of the, your uh, lamps on your model trains usually meant to be constant, no matter what voltage you feed. So that's why these two methods do have a distinct advantage uh, over the the resistor method. All right, so now let's talk about the CL two N three. This is a fairly new uh, newcomer into the into the industry here. Uh, it's a unique little device uh, or a component uh, that's designed specifically for driving LEDs. Hence, it's called an LED driver. Uh, and so, it's been built with that sole purpose only. And it is it works very well for that uh, for that uh, function. Now, uh, the current that this little device uh, or component is designed to, uh, to to provide at the output pin is exactly 20 milliampers. And it's very simple to use. It's just like using a resist resistor. You just put it in series with your LED and you're good to go. You only use two pins out of the three. The center pin is a non-connect. You just uh, snip that off and you you connect your positive to uh, the VA pin, which is you know, facing on the, on the left, the way it is looking on here on the circuit and the VB pin uh, connects to the positive of the LED and of course the negative of the LED goes right back to your, to your to your power source. Very very simple to use and very effective uh, as it produces um, uh, 20 milliampers once it saturates appropriately. Now the only drawback as you will see is that uh, these uh, uh, these CL2N3 um, components um, or it's really an integrated circuit inside here, um, requires, I think, approximately 4 volts uh, to really saturate, uh, whereas uh, whereas the LN334 uh, can start to do that just north of the 3 volt mark. And so you'll see the practical differences between these methods as we now start to compare them with some power. All right, so I'm just going to give you a quick close-up here of, of the components so you can actually see what they look like. Uh, before we do the, um, the the practical comparison, so here is a close up of an LM three three four. It's basically uh, got three pins. I want to see if I can hold it steady here in front of you. Um, uh, and basically, your um, this is your this is your uh, um, input pin where you feed in your plus voltage to it. This is a pin which is called R. So this is V plus. This is R or R set, and this is V minus. And so it's very simple. You feed in positive 12 volts up to 12 volts, or actually up to 40 volts. This can handle up to 40 volts. Uh, input in here. And then if you put a resistor between this R and the V out, 4.7 ohm resistor, you get another 4.5 watt milliampers also uh, contributed towards the output pin. And at here, when you connect your LED plus, 
on this uh, V minus pin, uh, you will end up having about 15 milliamperes uh, made available to you. Now, of course, the the negative pin, um, or the negative pin from the LED. Um, this is struggling to stay in focus here a bit. Um, there we go. Uh, the negative pin um, from the LED goes right back to your negative of a source. Very simple to use. So now let's look at the um, the CL two and three. It is it really is a very similar looking device, um, but um, uh, in appearance, but uh, completely different in how it how it operates internally. So here is a CL two and three. Both of these are uh, in a TO92 type uh, package. Uh, they come in various different configurations uh, physically. Uh, but again, very simple. In the, in the CL2 and 3, you'll see I've bent the center pin. Uh, that really needs to be snipped off. You don't even use that for driving LEDs, really. Uh, but uh, it, the, the pin configuration on a CL2 and 3 is very simple. You have your first pin on the left, uh, known as VA. And uh, the pin on the right is known as VB, a voltage B. And it's very simple. You feed your plus volts uh, into VA, up to 90 volts, mind you. It can handle up to 90 volts. And VB connects to you the plus of your LED. And the minus of your LED goes right back into the source. And the beauty is anything between 4 and 90 volts, this CL2 and 3 will only provide 20 milliamperes to the LED. And so it's very safe. It's designed exactly to drive LEDs, and there's no thinking involved into uh, incorporating these into driving LEDs. Whereas resistors, you have to calculate the voltage. Um, you have to first know which what's your max voltage that you're going to have on your circuit, and then calculate the resistance based on that to make sure you have the appropriate current going into your LED. Using these, no calculation or thinking involved. Just put this in series with your LED, and you're good to go. All right, so let's start doing some comparisons here now. Um, and so I have zoomed out the camera so you can actually see uh, the voltage on the power supply. Um, and it's right now generating 1.43 volts. Uh, obviously, there's nothing lighting up at this point. As you can see, all, all three LEDs are, are have not been turned on yet. So I'm going to dim the lighting here a bit so you can actually see uh, the LEDs as they uh, <clears throat> as they as they turn on. Um, Alright, so I do apologize. I already can't zoom in to the LEDs too much without losing view on on the um, on the power supply. And I think it's important that you also see the the numbers of the power supply as they start to increase. So just to give you a little heads up, I'm going to start increasing the voltage a little by little on the power supply, and you'll most likely see the um the um <clears throat> the resistor uh the led with the resistor start to turn on first uh but very short be very quickly behind it you'll start to see the ln334 start to light up uh, and of course the last to turn on would typically be the led driver uh, as this one requires about four volts um to to kick in uh, but uh, it's important you look at you see the uh, response the actual resp the uh, actual practical response of these leds against the voltage so here we go start increasing it little by little um so i'm up to almost two volts now and you can see they both lit up so let me back up a bit here so there you go so we're at about 2.4 volts right now and you can see that the led the resistor has barely turned on so the beauty about putting a resistor in place is that it turns on quicker with lower voltage, almost 2 volts, 2.4 volts, to to saturate to to saturate the resistor to be able to provide you with uh, with uh, sufficient sufficient V forward voltage. And again, this this kind of makes sense because as you know, these LEDs have a 2.1 volt. Uh, forward voltage and so anything over that will start to uh, turn the LED on So although it's turned on it's extremely extremely dim barely visible Now here's the interesting piece. I want you to notice is that as we increase the voltage just barely above this You'll start to see the LN334 starting to starting to peak up now the LED with the resistor is starting to get a little bit brighter 
but you can see at just at 3 volt mark at the 3 volts right now we are 3.09 volts uh, let me just bring it down to 3 volts so you can see that uh, the LM334 just starts to turn on uh, at the um, at the at the 3 volt mark and there it is so as you noticed before it took 2.4 volts to get the LED to start LED to start to turn on sorry the resistor LED method to start to turn on but with an additional 0.6 volts the LN334 gets into that same stage so a very minimal difference in in turn on voltage or startup voltage for the LN334 let's keep going higher and and uh, don't worry I will chart all these numbers in a in a quick table uh, and share with you after within the video so you can actually uh, take a good comparison you can put the video on pause and take a good comparison of of all three methods so I'm going to keep increasing the voltage now as you notice here and we should see the CL2 and 3 start to kick in around the 4.2 volt mark but as you observe that also observe how quickly the LN334 gets to full brightness and it actually goes to brightness far quicker than the LED with the resistor so there you go LN334 is almost at full brightness right now the LED with the resistor is still dimmer and we are only at 3.6 volts wow at almost just at 3.8 volts or 3.8 almost 3.9 volts the LN334 is at full saturation almost and look how much brighter it is than the one with the resistor and the beauty about it is now it will remain in that rough bright constant brightness right throughout the voltage range it's again a little bit brighter here at 4.2 volts and you'll notice at 4.2 volts I'm going to back up a bit so you start to notice this Pay attention over here, even though this one is very bright now, pay attention over here. You'll start to see this LED start to just turn on. There it is. There it is, just turned on at 4.2 volts. There it is, it's turned on. Four point two nine volts. It actually turned on at four point two volts. But to be fair, so here is is the the CL two and three LED driver um, begins to start to work um, at the four point two volt mark, and that's that's almost one point two volts more than the LN three three four when it when it actually turned on. So as you can see. From a turning on point where the LEDs actually start to illuminate, the resistor actually is the one the quickest to turn on. The LN334 is very short after that. Um, and of course, the last to turn on is the CL2 and 3 LED driver at 4.2 volts. But now you'll see that as we increase the voltage, um, the CL2 and 3 starts to catch up very quickly. At 4.48 volts, is almost getting bright there and now it's almost uh, at 5 point almost 6 volts it just it just starts to pop it's actually at 6 volts it's almost at the same brightness as the LED driven by the resistor and now it's going to go beyond that as we go more, more. the CL2 and 3 at about 7 volts you notice at about 7 volts right now, the CL2 and 3 has completely um, gotten bright, almost equal to the, uh, the, the LN334. The resistor, mind you, as you can see, the resistor method, the LED, is still actually nowhere close to these two from a brightness standpoint. And as we increase the voltage, you'll notice that these two methods will stay constant the led will remain constant where this one starts to continue to increase its brightness and i think we're around the 10 volt mark uh 
where visually I think we're close to where I can start to see now that the LED with the resistor has almost reached the same brightness as the LEDs with the LM334 and the CL2N3. So they're getting very close and you can see the hue right around here as what I'm also observing. It's it's almost the same um, at the 10.3 3 volt mark. All right, so just to complete this visual experiment, um, I'm going to continue to increase the voltage here in the, in the, the power supply uh, up to about 12 volts. The reason I'm going to stop at 12 volts or around there is because that's the max voltage I used to calculate the resistance required for the resistance method here uh, for driving this LED. I just don't want to go too much above that because then you'll start to oversaturate um, and that's not a good thing. So uh, now as you can see there is an added benefit to using the LM334 or the CL2 and 3 uh, because you don't have to worry about your input voltage. You can go up to up to 40 volts uh, in here without no impact to the LM234. It'll still maintain your 15 milliamperes to the LED. And you can go all the way up to 90 volts on the CL2 and 3 with no impact to the LED uh, and it'll still maintain 20 milliamperes to the uh, to the LED from that standpoint. Uh, and so that's the advantage of going, one of the advantages of going with these two methods. Uh, it removes restrictions um, and uh, less uh, time spent calculating uh, your resistor that you need. All right, so let's just... Uh, Increase the voltage now up to 12 just to complete this visual experiment. Um, and you'll see how constant the LN334 and CL2 and 3 are remaining. There we are, about 12.15 volts. I'm just going to keep it around there. Um, so there we are. And you can see now uh, they're all pretty much well saturated. And I'm looking at the... Uh, LEDs visually right now that look uh, almost very close in brightness. Um, so there we are. And let me now um, chart these numbers for you. Now just to con just to show you the uh, the the current draw, I'm going to actually uh, pay attention to this multimeter here, and this is where I'm going to show you uh, the current that's uh, that's going through each one of these different uh, methods. So let me start with the um, with the resistor method, I'm going to unremove the, the negative pin there. And let me just now feed negative through my there we go. And you can see I'm getting about 15.4 milliamperes going into the LED using the resistor method at 12 volts. Now let me just put this back the way it was. And let's go back to checking the current traveling through the uh, LN334. And this one is, as you was expecting, bang on to 15 milliamperes. And as I mentioned before, 10 milliamperes is what this device is designed to provide, but with a little trick where we talked about the additional current that we can salvage between the R and the V minus pin, uh, the 5 milliamperes is what's giving that additional, well, 4.5 odd milliamperes, is what's contributing towards this 15 milliamperes that we're seeing at the LED. All right, so, so now you can see both these are running at 15 milliamperes, the the 560 ohm resistor is giving 15 milliamperes here at 12 volts. The LN334 is giving 15 milliamperes now at 12 volts, but the voltage is really irrele irrelevant at this point for the LN334. Now let's move over and capture the current going through the CL2N3 driver over to the LED. And as we pin the multimeter over to the CL2N3, 
you can see that it's providing 20 milliamperes to the LED. So that's a slight advantage here as well. It makes the LED a bit more brighter. So you got 15 milliamperes, 15 milliamperes, and 20 milliamperes. All right, so let's talk about our, our observations here as part of this little experiment. So what one thing we observed was the fact that um, the resistor method was the first method to turn on with the lowest voltage required. So that's a distinct advantage for the resistor method because, you know, as your locomotive starts to crawl, it'll be the first one to start to light up. Now, I have done some tests with some locomotives running in parallel to, to looking at this, and I found that um, at, at, about, at about 3 volts, where the LN334 also starts to kick in, um, is when the locomotive really starts to barely even crawl on the track. So really, both these methods, you know, are really um, quite suitable from that standpoint. Um, however, you'll notice that even though the resistor kicked in first, resistor method kicked in first, the LN334 was not far behind. It followed, but it followed up very quickly uh, at, at around three volts, where it came up at uh, the same startup point that this one did at, at around 2.4 volts. So really, uh, only a 0.6 volt difference between the startup voltage for both of these methods, the resistor and the LN334. However, you'll notice that the CL2 and 3 has the ability to give you 20 milliamperes to an LED, whereas both these methods really don't do that. And of course, you have to be very careful with, with the resistor method because you have to make sure your upper end voltage does not exceed what you had calculated. Whereas for these two methods, the LN334, the CL2 and 3, there really is no calculations involved. You don't have to worry about the, the max voltage that you're feeding in here as long as it's below 40 volts for your LN334. Of course, if you look using it for model trains, you're way below that. You're not going beyond the 16 volt mark anyways. Uh, and for the uh, CL2 and 3, uh, you can go up to a max of 90 volts, which is really, really convenient for something like this. So you also would notice that uh, the CL2 and 3 began to illuminate, um, oh, I'm sorry, the CL2 and 3 method uh, began to eliminate the LED um, at about 4.2 volts. So that was a little a little bit uh, too high, I would think, from that standpoint. Your locomotive by that point would have started to move, uh, and so it just wouldn't be as appropriate, I would think, uh, for your main, uh, main headlights or ditch lights or whatever for your, uh, um, or even Mars lights for your locomotives. Uh, it's up to you. I mean, certain locomotives obviously require more voltage, startup voltage, and in which case this would be also appropriate. Uh, although it caught up very quickly, um, it rapidly uh, caught up uh, to the LN334. The resistor, mind you, was still behind uh, because it hadn't reached its max voltage. So at around the 5 volt mark, you would notice that these two pulled ahead and resistor was still dim. In fact, the resistor actually, the resistor method actually caught up to these two methods around the 10.3 the volt mark. And you you got to think about it, at 10.3 volts, the locomotive is actually humming around on your track quite a bit at, at, a, at a decent speed. And so having a dim um, headlight or some ditch lights or whatever that you have in your locomotive wouldn't be as aesthetically pleasing as, as these two. So, as you can see, there are advantages and disadvantages to all three methods. Um, I personally, um, I'll give you my opinion here, I personally like using the LN334 method because I think it has the best uh, of, of all worlds in the sense that its startup voltage is very close to the method with the, with the resistor, only 0.6 volt difference. It saturates very quickly to 15 milliamperes. Um, within like six volts, I think it was almost six or seven volts. It was almost fully saturated, um, and so it 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 startup point is very close to the resistor method. Its saturation point is also equally close, um, and it can handle up to a, a forty volt uh, input. And so uh, I think from all those standpoints, it it's um, it's kind of a, uh, a no brainer that this actually is a very advantageous mechanism of of um, eliminating your locomotives and passenger cars with LEDs. 
Now, mind you, all these three methods work equally well. There is no right or wrong answer. It's just what kind of desired outcome you would like to like to see uh, from from your uh, from your locomotives or passenger cars. It what really dictates what you use. Again, the purpose of shooting this video is not to tell you that there's a clear winner. It's just to show you. Uh, exactly how the the characteristics of these of these devices and how they actually uh, how they actually perform in real life uh, in, in in a practical form uh, so that you can then choose which method is most appropriate for you so now there are a few additional observations I'd like to share with you beyond the the electrical explanations or the uh, the electronics behind this uh, but rather more from a practical standpoint so if you look at the um, the method of using an LM334 with a resistor um, or the CL2 and 3 with just a single device, uh, you'll notice that the LM334 requires an additional component, which is a res resistor. So there's really two physical components um, in the LM334 method, whereas you only have one physical component, which is a resistor, in the resistor method. And one physical component for the CL2 and 3, which is just the CL2 and 3 uh, device itself. So if you're looking to put a um, LED into a, let's say, an HO scale locomotive, this would be non-issue because most, most HO scale locomotives have sufficient space inside uh, to house all these three mechanisms. And in which case I would perhaps then choose the LM334 for its obvious advantages we've talked about before. However, if you are trying to put leverage these mechanisms to be utilized in a very confined space, for example, an N-scale locomotive, um, you might find that the LN334 with the resistor may be a little bit uh, restrictive uh, and you may not find the optimal space within some locomotives in N-scale. In which case, then, the resistor method or the CL2N3 method will prove to be more advantageous. Well, what if you want to actually add some additional LEDs and not just light one LED? For example, if you want to have more than one headlight or you want to have a couple of ditch lights turned on or something like that, or um, or if you're illuminating your passenger cars and you want to have uh, more LEDs inside your passenger cars, well, that's where the resistor method becomes a little bit of an issue because now you have to recalculate um, the uh, the resistance required to have two LEDs in series here. Whereas with the LM334 and the CL2 and 3, it becomes a non-issue because both these methods are designed to provide you with either 15 milliampers or 20 milliampers respectfully for the LM334, the CL2 and 3 method to the LEDs. So you can actually put LEDs in series here and with no change, you can actually eliminate more than just one LED. Of course, the startup voltage will then change because now when you have two LEDs in series, uh, the V forward would be almost four volts, right? And so, but besides that, it's very easy to just tack on more LEDs um, with these two methods as opposed to the method with the resistor. And let me just demonstrate that right now for you. So I've just added one additional LED here next to the CL2 and 3. It may not be visible, but because it's lit up, let me just... Turn the power off so you can you can see what's happening here. There, and I'm going to add a second LED here now. I'm going to move the uh, the power power connection out, and then put a second LED here as well in series with the uh, the first LED. And I put a second LED also in series with the first LED for the CL2 and 3. So here you go, two LEDs now, just one plug behind each other. And uh, I'm going to turn the power supply on. And right now I'm only lighting up one LED here, as you can see. Here's a one LED from each one of these methods. I'm going to just put it back on. Here you go, the way they were originally. Okay, now let me just move the negative from connecting to the first LED, but I'm connected to the second LED now, and you'll see both them light up with no issues. There you go. 
both them same intensity no calculations whatsoever and i can do the exact same for the cl2 and 3. and there you go you got two leds now lighting up with no changes to the circuit no changes to any calculations just makes it very accommodating and simple to be able to chain more leds in in series here this way but of course as you'll notice as i reduce the voltage the voltage now to turn on these two leds will be more than what it was originally so you can scan bring it down now little by little and we'll see the cl2 and 3 start to turn off um very very soon so there we go the cl2 and 3s are barely illuminating right now so it took about 6.68 .6 or 6.7 volts to get both these LEDs in series to turn on for the CL2 and 3. And let's go lower now. Okay, now we're at about 5.6 volts and you can see the LN334s are barely illuminating now as well. So as you can see, the more LEDs you add in series, the higher the startup voltage but regardless though if you're going to be using them let's say on passenger cars etc you know you can just chain them together there's also another advantage to using these two and let me go back to the 12, 12 volts here so we can uh, talk about that advantage as well now let's say you want to you want to use these on other aspects of your layout let's say you want to illuminate some buildings you want to put some street lamps etc well the beauty about using the ln334 method and the cl2 and 3 method is that you know that the voltage you're going to feed to your street lamps so the voltage you're going to feed to your buildings is 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 fixed it's going to be about 12 volts and if that's the case you can actually use one of these ln334s to drive many buildings, put lights into many buildings. You can put one light into each building and this series chain of multiple LEDs here and run them off one LN334. You can do the same with the CL2 and 3. You can put uh, one CL2 and 3 and have multiple LEDs in a building, multiple uh, LEDs uh, or multiple street lamps um, that run off a single CL2 and 3. And there's no calculations involved, no need, no need to do any kind of thinking, because uh, I'm sure you can you can you can relate when you're under the, your layout in a remote awkward position. The last thing you want to be doing is soldering, you know, uh, uh, appropriate resistors and and so on and so forth. So you just put one of the CL2 and threes, put a couple of LEDs behind it, and you know you're safe, and you know things are going to function the way they are. Um, and uh, your your layout is never going to go above 16 volts anyways for your for your buildings or, or street lamps and mind you these both devices can take up to 40 volts for the lm334 and 90 volts for the cl2 and 3 so these two have some distinct advantages if you're going to use them in, in other aspects of the layout besides your locomotive or passenger cars as well all right, so I hope you found this video uh, useful for you, um, at least from a practical standpoint. Um, here is the table I was I was referring to before that c captures all the information that we just uh, we just captured through this experiment. Uh, you can put the video on pause, and you can basically look at those numbers uh, and uh, figure out how you'd like to uh, leverage these methods uh, towards uh, uh, your model trains and model railroading. Again, if you have any comments or suggestions, uh, please feel free to include them in the comment section, uh, and I'll be more than more than happy to address them for you uh, from that standpoint. Have a great day, and we'll talk to you soon.